<laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Monster Chiller Thriller 7. Yes, this is the seventh episode of my, or the seventh year of my Halloween episode. I wish to thank, wish to thank all of you for coming in. Goodbye. No. All right. So, uh, hey, at least I didn't script the intro this time. Actually, I screwed up. I had to restart it. Anyway, um, so we are on uh, another episode, another year of Halloween. My glasses are already fogged up. That sucks. All right. So um, I went to World Market today. Yes, went back to World Market. Didn't do the uh, total wine thing this time. Um, funny thing is, I actually didn't buy any of the wines that were in their Halloween um uh, email that I can remember. Uh, I think the other ones, I, I, I don't think the other ones were like at the front. I don't think any of these three were in their email. But anyway, uh, so I chose three wines that are Halloween themed in some sort of fashion, uh, whether it's the uh, label art or the name of the wine or whatever. So, um, and I don't know how good these wines are going to be. So, uh, yeah. History says that many times I end up not liking at least one or two of the wines. All right, so um, let's let's get going here. We have Horatio again. He made another appearance. And we're back on the regular set. Um, honestly, this was already set up from the last recording. I didn't take anything down. And I really didn't feel like taking it all down, setting it up in the other room, and then setting it back up in here. So I just said, we'll go kind of old school. I know I've done at least one, maybe two episodes from this table. I've done one from the kitchen table, and then I did a whole bunch from the actual living room. Uh, got my music going earlier today for uh, for setup. So um, yeah, got the cauldron going. Yeah, down to one of these lights because the batteries keep dying on me, and I keep forgetting to go get more. And I didn't go. To, it's me. It's one o'clock in the morning. Actually, one thirty in the morning. <laughs> Yes. Anyway, um, and I really feel like going to Walmart to buy some batteries. So maybe next year I'll remember to buy more batteries for my little tea lights or whatever they are. I don't even know if you can see the thing. All right. So um, let's get into some wine. I don't think there's any business to attend to. Uh, next week's wines are the, I think the Cassiano del Diablo ones. So kind of Halloween-ish. But I think I'm releasing that. Maybe I'll release it. I'll re end up releasing that video on the first of November instead of October 31st. Must hydrate. All right. So um, the first wine. This is the Stella Rosa uh, Loringial Loriginale uh, Black. Um, this actually comes from the San Antonio Winery. Um, that's actually out of California, but this wine comes from Italy, and I bought it at World Market for, let me look up the little price thing here. Uh, it normally sells for $14.99, but I got it at $10.99, had a bunch of little discounts going on. Like a buy, buy four red wines, you get 20% off, and then I think my Explorer thing maybe got me some discount, I'm not really sure. There's like three, there's like three discounts on every wine, so. Anyway, uh, so I paid $10.99. Regular price is $14.99. Now, this wine, and real quick, we'll kind of look at this. Uh, it says a low alcohol grape wine cocktail with natural flavors, semi-sweet. Well, that's what it says on this, but it was packaged in the little Halloween section with this thing. So, yeah, it says, so, you know, Stella Rosa Black, it's got the little you know, skull on there with the crown, happy Stelloween. You know, that's all great. Limited arts, limited edition art series. And that's all it says on here. There's nothing, nothing really tells you what the frick the wine is. So, we're hoping it's good. Um, they, so they, they talk about how, um, so the, the, the uh, family's background is actually from Italy, uh, from the Piedmont area, apparently. And they were looking to have uh, some other wines. They wanted like something like sparkling wine, so they actually uh, made a they, they make a bunch of under the Stella Rosa label a bunch of sparkling wines or semi sparkling, semi sweet. So that's what this is. I don't know if it's sparkling because it's red, but I know they have some red sparkling wines according to them. Uh, and they were founded as the San Antonio Winery in 1917. 
um, and uh, in the Los Angeles area. That's where they're that's where they're at. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Brand new, uh, what should we call it? Gas capsule in there. I put in today, or I seen me put in yesterday, but I've only done a, only done like a couple glasses of wine out of it. <clears throat> Got the uh, the traditional uh, vessel, but this time, ooh, you know what? It is somewhat sparkling. Which you're not supposed to use sparkling wine with a Corvin. That's why, because there's gas in it already. Of course, I can't get the stupid thing out. Here we go. Ta da! Ah, wonderful. All right, so. Not too bad. I mean, we're all good. But I can already smell the sweetness out of it. So, um, some fact sheets about it. I don't think there's a, is there a vintage on this thing? It may be non-vintage. I don't remember. Yeah, there's no vintage on it. Uh, on the front or the back. It actually has nutrition facts on it. Which I've never, s well, on a regular wine, you don't need it. So, uh, amounts, amount per serving, 160 calories. There's approximately three servings? They say eight fluid ounces is a serving. Wow, I don't know what country they're from. Italy, uh, uh, America, but, huh? All right, but um, it does have uh, zero grams of fat, zero grams of sodium, or milligrams. Uh, 23 grams of carbohydrates, of which all of them are sugar. And no grams of protein. Huh, I've never seen that on a regular wine label. So, I mean, this is a wine cocktail, so I don't know. Anyway, so it says Stella Rosa is a proprietary blend of several red grape varietals, including Brachetto. The wine is combined with natural flavors, so yeah, of ripe blackberry, blueberry, and raspberry. Uh, the grapes are harvested, pressed, centrifuged, and then held cold as juice. In uh, 28, at 28 degrees Fahrenheit, the juice is fermented at various intervals throughout the year. Um, in this manner, the Stella Rosa wine remains fresh and delicate throughout the entire year. Um, in other words, they kind of make it on demand. Um, I, that's how I read it. The wine has natural acidity and a low pH. Because high acid is low pH. Uh, this is in perfect... Which actually is good they put that there because... I'll be honest, to me, high pH is acid because I think, you know, to me, acid is more noticeable than alkaline because we tend to talk about acid more than alkaline. But I always have to remember high acid low, is low pH. Um, you know, it was a long time since I had to take chemistry, right? This is in perfect balance with the sweetness. It is not cloying or heavy. Uh, the Riboli family, who owns the winery, um, use this technique to capture the fresh blackberry and raspberry characteristics found in Stella Rosa. It has natural carbonation. The juice is fermented in Charmotte style pressurized tanks. So they don't add, they don't add the carbonation uh, later, which is like the cheapest way to make a sparkling wine. Um, so yeah, I forgot it said that, so I should have remembered it's semi-sparkling. Um, as the alcohol is created, so is the carbonation. Um, once the desired sweetness is achieved, the wine is centrifuged and bottled. Alcohol stays at approximately 5.5% and has 10% residual sugar. All right, so I remember don't swirl the wine in this cup because it'll just go everywhere. I think that I'm getting a good little glow off of this. Anyway, yeah, the, uh, I had this, I don't know, one of my, I think I know the, uh, the kitchen table one I had this uh, little app on this on on my original iPad this is actually a friend of mine uh, gave me her iPad uh, which is still a couple generations old it doesn't I can't run the brand new iOS 10 but I got iOS 9 on there and it runs great so anyway but I do remember having this app had a download again so you know, the, the purple glow there I can't use green I remember don't use green because there's a green screen behind me and I'd be really dumb, then I couldn't see my face if I did that. And there's no way to fix that, pretty much, without 
Yeah, it would take forever to edit that because I'd have to put a map. Yeah. I'd have to. Every time I moved, I'd have to move that and it'd be a pain. Alright. Yeah, it's fruity for sure. Like, yeah, this ate raspberry, uh, blackberry, blueberry, blueberry for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, this might be kind of tasty, so let's see. You know, if you're at a party, it's a Halloween party, right? You're at a party, everyone's dressed up, you got the Grim Reaper going on, or whatever, and um, you need something that's kind of fun to serve your guests who really aren't wine fishing autos, or if they are, and they're just there to have a good time, sure, why not? I mean, that's what this wine is designed for. It's designed for parties, it's designed for having a good time. Um, this is not a wine that, like, a psalm would necessarily go, oh, we're going to be very serious with our wine here. This is not a wine like that. Is it delicious? Is it tasty? It's tasty, yeah. It's got the fruit. It's got the sweetness to it. I mean, it's like a dessert wine. It's like, you know, a nice little sparkling frizzante, semi-frizzante, sparkling, you know, that's all means the same thing, uh, you know, sweet wine. Is it overly sweet? No, actually it's not. And like I said, it's not cloying or heavy. Um, it's got some good acid to it. Um, you know, it's it's not terrible as a beverage. And that's what it is, is a beverage. It's not, I mean, I know it's a wine, but wine cocktail is a good way to put it, I guess. When I heard wine cocktail, I was expecting some fortification to it. Um, but since it's a low alcohol thing, that's the other thing about it. It's only 5% alcohol, man. It'll take two bottles to get me drunk. You know, actually three. <laughs> Almost three. I mean, yeah. I mean, so this is, in a way, I mean, it's low alcohol. So it's, it's a good, it's something that's actually good to serve your guests. So it's not bad. Am I going to necessarily uh, finish this? Um, I don't know. I mean... I can't release the Corvin on it. We're not supposed to. So once I open that bottle for, for reals, um, I'm going to have to drink it. Now, I, I might be going to a friend's house tomorrow. Uh, and we're doing like some pour stuff. Maybe I'll just bring this. And that way everybody can drink that. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Anyway, it's tasty. But you, you, you're buying it for a specific reason, and uh, you know, buying it for buying it for uh, something serious, like you know, a serious night. You know, I wouldn't. Could you buy it for? Yeah, could you buy it for something like you know, uh, uh, what would you call it? Valentine's Day little like dinner at the house, and you want to start off something with that's instead of like actual champagne or sparkling wine. You want to start off with something like this because your uh, significant other isn't exactly into wine, but you want to have something kind of fruity and, and all that, and, they, and that's what they like? Sure. I'd probably go with something else, but if like a party situation, yeah, why not? It's okay. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, this one. Uh, so we can close out of that window, and now we can go into... Michael David. All right, so this is the uh, Michael David Wineries, uh, the Seven Deadly Sins, 2013 from Lodi, California. Um, so Michael David, uh, they make quite a few different wines. Uh, so there are brothers named Michael and David uh, Phillips, if I remember correctly, and um, which. You know, I went to the wrong thing. Yeah, da da. Story: the Phillips family history. So uh, anyway, but they've been. Uh, I think they're like the fifth generation uh, grape growers. Um, and they have 160 acres near the town of Lodi. Uh, they began farming. They, they've been farming since their great great grandfather Andrew Harshner and his wife Lucille. Uh, homestead at 160 acres near the town of Lodi following the Civil War in the 1860s. 
Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, they are, yeah, so they're like a uh, fifth um, generation. Or is it sixth? Or is that the next one? Is fifth and sixth generation? I don't really remember. No. Hold on. Anyway. Um, yeah, so they, they've been doing it for quite a while. Um, and, you know, Seven Deadly Zins, you know, so we got the Sins and the Deadly. This is a wine that has been around a long time. And it's been a wine that's been on my radar to do for Halloween for a long time. And for whatever reason, I would, I would um, pick something else. And I don't know why. Oh, I paid, how much did I buy this for? Doo -doo -doo. All right, it is regularly $15.99. But I bought it for eleven ninety nine with all the all the discounts at World Market. I also bought a few other things for Christmas, believe it or not. Um, to to uh, for a, for the Christmas show, or most likely the Christmas show. Uh, I bought actually a mold wine, pre mold. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but a few years ago I actually did um, an episode on doing your own mulling of wine. Um, that was interesting. Um, I don't think I'll ever do that one again as far as making my own mulled wine. But it was it was a nice little exercise in learning about learning about that. I wasn't exactly like raving about it, but you know, hey. Um, and then I got this like eggnog <laughs> that has wine in it, so like you know, spiked eggnog. I love eggnog. And then uh, what else did I get? Oh, I got some. I actually just got like this regular wine. So, um, so I got a couple things there, but um, I also anticipate having some uh, some other fun wines coming to me, uh, courtesy of uh, the people that have been providing me with actually some wine recently. So, um, probably sneak one of those wines into the uh, Christmas episode or into the Thanksgiving episode because it is a sparkling wine. All right, and I'm super excited. New Year's Eve, I'm going to have something special for New Year's Eve if all works out. All right, so. Uh, Michael David Winery, Seven Deadly Zins. Uh, so it's a, if I remember correctly, a 100% Zinfandel. Actually, I think it has a little bit of Petite Syrah on it. Yes. A Zinfandel with a touch of Petite Syrah. What they mean by touch, I don't know. But as long as it has uh, no more than 25% Petite Syrah, Petite Syrah for the United States, they're good to go. Uh, it spends 12 months in American oak. And um, they said the 2013 harvest was uh, pretty good. They said um, uh, the first of our red grapes came in early September with the later ripening varietal such as Old Vine Zin, which is what they say these, this comes from, uh, coming in early October after a heavy crop in 2012. The 13 harvest was expected to be smaller than average, but we still saw large crop yields across most varietals. Moderate temperatures throughout the summer allowed the fruit to develop full flavors while retaining acidity. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, not much else on there. Uh, but yeah, they have been making this wine for a decent amount of time. All right, so let's check it out. I was about to swirl it. So, I mean, the nose, I mean, it's not as powerful and fruity as the last wine, um, but there's, you know, definitely signature black and red fruits, um, a little bit of spice to it, almost a bit of smokiness to it. I said it was like 15% alcohol too. -wee. Definitely alcohol on this puppy. Where is it hidden? Yep, 15%. I think it can be almost as it's going to be as high as 16 ish. Alright, so um on the back label, I'll kind of read it because it really does kind of describe the wine. Sinful indeed, though with this wickedly delicious zin is temptation at first sip. It's also really high acidity. My mouth is really watering. Um, and that's not just our pride talking. Yeah, I'm marketing speak. Blame it on the Catholic school upbringing of brothers Michael and David or their lust for hedonistically seductive wine. 
In other words, wine that has lots of flavor to it and probably has a little bit of residual sugar. That's gonna balance the alcohol. And then it says our flagship Old Vine Zinfandel hails from Lodi, where Zin reigns, reigns supreme. Here for six generations, we're given, we've given our souls uh, uh, to growing the finest grapes so that the saints and sinners alike can enjoy the seven deadly sins. Oh Lord, forgive us our zins. Um, hey, creative, I like it. Um, the wine itself, it's not bad. I mean, you know, this this is the this is the problem where where I am in my wine professional, you know, my my where I am professionally in wine now versus seven eight years ago. This wine I would probably give a long time ago a, a pretty high rating. I mean, I wouldn't give it over a ninety necessarily because if you watched my show back in the day, it was rare that a wine, no matter how good it was, got a ninety or above. So um, that's why I stopped giving ratings because I never wanted to ever seem to give a 90. Um, but um, it's not a bad wine. Is it a wine that Psalms are going to be like, oh, right, this is a very serious wine. And, no, probably not. But I mean, is it a Zin? Yes. Does it have the Zin characteristics you're looking for? Yes. Is it tasty? Yes. Um, it's not expensive. I mean, it's normally what, what did I say? Normally, uh, fifteen ninety nine. Got it for twelve. I mean, so if you get it for anywhere between twelve and and sixteen dollars, I mean, you're paying the appropriate price for it. I mean, it's tasty. Again, if you're having a, a Halloween party and you need a big, bold, uh, or, you know, somewhat bold red wine to serve, yeah. I mean, especially if you got some good food to go with it, or if you're just gonna serve pizzas. You know, little, little like pizza rolls or, you know, little, those, little, those little pizza pocket things or you're going to actually serve actual pizza or pizza, uh, you know, or some somewhat, you know, similar, similar foods. Yeah, it's not going to break the bank and uh, your guests will enjoy it because they'll, they'll remember the party more than the wine anyway. Um, or they'll go, hey, the wine was great. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's an, it's it's okay. Um, is this a wine that I could just drink on an everyday basis? Yeah, but I mean, my palate has changed over the years, so I, I am freaking spoiled. Um, we talked about this with a bunch of Psalms and other people, chefs at lunch the other day. We're in an industry where we we drink high-end wine a lot of times, you know, with the reps come in, winemakers come in, take us to lunch, or they just come over and, and taste us on wines, and I, do, I am spoiled. I really am. But, you know, this is why I try to do wines that are not twenty over $20 all the time, because there's, there's decent wines in that segment. This is a decent wine. If you like this style of wine, you're going to be very happy with this. It's not bad. I mean, I'm going to drink it. I'm going to enjoy it uh, after tonight. So, I mean, a core of it, which is why I have it. Um, so, I would be really disappointed if I had opened the cork and then had these vacuum in and then be like, well, man, I didn't get to it in time. I have to dump it down the drain because it's it's turned. I would be pretty upset. Not necessarily that I spent, you know, money on it, but just because I would want to enjoy it. So, it's pretty good wine uh, if you're looking for that. And, you know, guilty pleasure. I like Zins, and this is the type of Zin that, I'm, that I, I kind of, quote, grew up on as far as um, earlier in my wine, my wine uh, appreciation life, pre-sommelier, pre pre-studying for wine. Uh, this is pretty much the type of Zin that I remember enjoying. So, yeah, pretty decent. All right, so next wine. Uh, this was kind of fun to um, investigate. It's one of those wines where I kind of had to like dig a little bit, not but not too terribly hard to find out some stuff. But um, this is the 2014 El Monstruo. El Monstruo. Whoa! Don't be don't be uh, getting all tipsy there, Horatio. All right, uh, this is a Malbec Bonarda from Argentina. 
Um, it is actually made by the uh, Boutineau or Boutinot um, uh, company. So they are, I'm sorry, the El Monstruo de las Montañas. All right, so I'm going to read the, oh, I paid, let's get to the money first. Uh, I paid, I paid $7.19 for it, and it normally sells for $9.99. Nine times, first All right, um, so I'm gonna read the back, and this is why I've got, well, I mean, you know, El Monstruo. So it sounds like monster, right? I'm like, okay, monstrous, All right? So on the back, high in hills lives a lonely beast, Ukamar, the Andean Yeti. Reports are rare, but a huge silent monster roams uh, the mountains above Mendoza. Its beating heart, la its beating heart heard loud down in, down the valleys. The bright whites of its eyes there, then gone in a shadow. El Monstruo de las Montañas celebrates this mystical hill fellow in our richly flavored, toothsome, and big-hearted blend of local legends Malbec and Bonarda. Uh, it is 75% uh, Malbec, 25% Bonarda, um, and then uh, and 14% alcohol. Since I'm looking at the back label. The fact sheet that I actually pulled up is not for this. It's not for this vintage section for 15, and they have 80% Malbec, 20% Bonarda, and it says it's also 13% alcohol. Oh, so it's 13% rather than 14% alcohol. Um, so uh, to kind of give you an idea, so the the company that makes this, um, Butano has been working with growers in Argentina for over 15 years. Uh, it's a little bit more brightness there. Uh, constantly sourcing the best value from Vinches to Vinches. Winemaker Eric Monin has been working tirelessly over the last few years to secure the best long-term contracts. For these important wines sourced from specific old vine estates in Mendoza, blah, 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 blah. All right, so um, these guys uh, have been around for a little while. Um, they make wine in a lot of places. They hail from uh, England. Uh, even though their name is well, sounds French, so they probably, I think they actually came from France. But they were in England. Uh, the son was uh, was helping his parents' restaurant in England. He went to France to um, to buy some wines to sell at the ho at the um, at the hotel at the restaurant. Um, I'm not sure exactly if it was like you know private label stuff, but they wanted they wanted to do that. Um, they were established in 1980, so um, so it was just kind of read a little bit of this. Boutino have grown to become one of the leading UK-based distributors of quality wines from around the world. The portfolio consists of over 1,400 wines, and they sell more than 44 million bottles each year, supplying a huge variety of wines to the UK and international retailers, restaurateurs, and wholesalers. Um, they, of course, everyone you know touts quality. That's as they say they they you know they contain only the best wines sourced from the finest grapes. Blah, blah, blah. Being a producer, they can control stuff, but they have production facilities in France and South Africa. Uh, and... Um, where else do they have? They're also in Australia and South America and all that good stuff. And they've got some awards and everything. So, um, anyway. So, who is this El Monstruo de las Montañas? Uh, or the uh, Ukamar. All right, um, so the Ukamar, this is one of those, um, I'm gonna open this. I'll screw cap. You know what that means? You gotta drink this wine. Um, let me give myself a, maybe a little healthy pour because um, we're going to enjoy this wine the rest of the night, hopefully. All right, so, um, so this Ukamar is uh, the equivalent of Bigfoot in South America, which is funny because when you look up El Monstruo, um, actually what comes up is this shark. Um, so that's why they have to say the, uh, the monster from the mountains instead of just the monster um, because it's some mythical uh, shark. This is another mythical creature. Um, it's like Bigfoot. Um, it's described as five to seven feet tall with thick hair, small eyes, and huge arms and legs. Some people report it as, as a half bear humanoid. Um, 
so one of the things is um, they think, and there's a there's a show called um, Destination Truth. Uh, I think that's what it was called. I mean, there's a wiki for it. They had an episode called Haunted Island Prison, The Ukamar. So they had two different, um, they're chasing two different, you know, monsters or ghosts or whatever. Um, and they uh, went to Argentina and they had the Argentinian big, you know, Bigfoot, blah, blah, blah. Um, they uh, went down there, they hung out and they went to, which is actually called, they, they went to the Ukamar Ranch. I'm like, oh, wow. So they have like a wildlife preserve for Ukamars. Uh, not really, but. Um, and they said, after a fun-filled grilling experience, Josh has shown the bones of an Ukamar that was shot by a local. Later, he and his team borrow some horses to ride up to the, into the Ukamar's home turf. Um, after finding suitable, after finding a suitable R, in it the area. Um, come on, guys, I proofread your stuff. I mean, this is not actually a new post, so at some point in time, you might want to... All right, so I know someone's going to go find some, a, a, something misspelled on my website, I guarantee you, um, from like a post from like five years ago. All right, um, area to set up base camp. Uh, but these guys are professional, right? Uh, the group encounters a number of unexplainable phenomena, not the least of which is a huge animal footprint inside a cave. All right, so what do they find out? Well, they get, when they get back to the States, they consult with this guy named Dr. Jim Dines, who I guess is a regular on the show and an, an employee of the Los Angeles Museum of Natural History, and he identified the bones as a dog. <laughs> nice. But the footprint, he says, probably belongs to a dangerous bear known as the Spectacle Bear. So, um, and they say, after looking up the rare bear, Josh realizes that the Spectacle Bear is a dead ringer for the Ukamar. Mystery solved. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're not, they're not the only ones that speculate that the speckle, speckle, the speckled uh, bear. Um, but one of the other websites says, but this animal can't emit sound like in the description above. So apparently it makes this sound called, uh, which is uhu, uhu, uhu. I guess, I don't know. But um, yeah, so, you know, one of those little legends, you know, boogeyman uh, to scare you or whatever. So. Let's see if this is a big, powerful wine like it says it is. It's a great story. That's that's why. But it did take me a little while to like find this version instead of like the the shark version. I mean, it didn't take that long. Like, took a couple extra searches. All right. So uh, on the nose, again, don't swirl it. I mean, it's fairly aromatic. Um, more red than black fruits, but I got both of those going on. But you know, definitely a fruit, more fruit forward uh, wine. Some spices in there, like baking spices, you know, Christmas spices. Okay. Um, it's got that stemminess that I do associate with Malbec. I'm trying to like identify Malbec a little bit better um, because sometimes I call it something else. Um, I mean, against my purplish magenta background, I might see the electric pink on the rim if this was a clear glass. Um, electric pink on the you know on the rim of, of the glass when you tilt it can be a sign that it's Malbec from South America. But not all Malbecs from South America exhibit that, not, nor do all wines that have that are necessarily a Malbec-based wine or 100% Malbec or whatever. Um, they could have some Malbec in there, maybe a little bit, but not necessarily. You know... Again, it's 10 bucks. It's a $10 wine. If you're looking for something different, interesting, and again, you're having a Halloween party, and you want to be able to tell the story of the uh, Bigfoot from Argentina, and talk about how great that is, and you associate with the wine, and everyone's having a great time, yeah, they're going to like the wine. You're going to like the wine. Everyone's going to be happy. It's great. Um, as far as 
is this wine that I'm gonna like go, man, I gotta get that wine again? Probably not. I mean, it's not, it doesn't suck, but it's not necessarily my style of wine. Um, Malbecs aren't bad. I mean, I've had some pretty amazing Malbecs. Again, I'm kind of spoiled. Um, but even then, like, like one of my one of my favorite Malbecs I have at work um, is probably I'm gonna guess forty to sixty bucks, which is expensive, and it's also big, bold, and fruity, and you know, loads of flavor. You know, I wouldn't call it necessarily processed or whatever. You know, fruit bombish, but yeah, it's it's really tasty. Um, and then I have an, I have a Malbec based blend. Uh, it has all five varietals, and it probably sells for twenty to thirty bucks. That one's pretty amazing, actually. I really like that one a lot. But it's it's not one hundred percent Malbec, um, but it's you know it's it's a Bordeaux varietal. It's just Malbec's the dominant one. It's called Altamira. Uh, uh, I'm not Altamira. No, that's the expensive 100% Malbec from them. That's that's probably like 100 bucks retail. Um, this is the Quimera from Acaville Ferrer. If you ever find that out there, that's amazing wine. Uh, the other one I was talking about was Black Tears from Tapas. That's pretty amazing wine too. I mean, it goes great with burgers. Because I, I know I had one with a burger. But this one, I wouldn't put it in, in that same category. I mean, it's a $10 bottle of wine. It's not horrible. Um, I wouldn't pour it down the drain. Uh, I will drink it. I will enjoy it. But yeah, it's classic Malbec that I, you know, or so a couple markers that I'm going, yeah, Malbec's probably what this wine is. Again, not 100%. Like I'm always going to say it's Malbec, but it lead me down that path to a New World wine. New World, okay, it's either gonna be a couple different wines, Malbec probably. I might look for that color. I might look for that, that, that little color marker. And if I find it, then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna say Malbec. If I don't find it, I'll still say it still could be Malbec. So it's got like that stemminess, like just like, you know, I don't know. Like I literally am eating grape stems, okay? Um, that's not a bad thing because most Malbecs have that in them and other wines have that in them and it's desirable, so. Um, it's not a bad wine. I mean, it's 10 bucks. It's not bad. I mean, if you find it, you like it, you like Malbecs, definitely get it. It's got a little Bonarda in there. You know, something a little different. Adds a little more fruit, uh, fruitiness to it. Yeah. All right. So we're going to wrap this up because we're almost at 40 minutes, which is typical for a Halloween episode. Um, I want to thank everyone for stopping by, especially you, Horatio. You're, you've been here every year. I think every year. I actually think I have to go back to the very first one to see if to see if my little skull was there. I'm pretty sure. Um, but uh, I want to thank everybody for stopping by. Um, if you find any of these wines and they are up your alley uh, for whatever it is, price-wise or flavor profile, definitely buy them. If you're like Mark, you, you just had some crappy wines. I get it. This is Halloween. This supposed to have fun. We're not worried about you know serving people wines that are twenty bucks or higher. I mean that gets expensive, man. I mean if you roll deep, cool, man. You, all right, pour the Petrus. I don't know, uh, but uh, if you need some, you need some wines that aren't going to kill you on price. Um, you want to have something, or you're going to bring wine to a party. You know, it's like a BYOB. You want to bring a couple bottles of it for your personal consumption or to share with other people. Go ahead. Like I said. Tomorrow I might bring this wine to uh, where I'm going. Hell, I might bring all three of them. And be like, here, I got some wine. I mean, but the person I'm going to is Ceci's place. Like, if you know who Ceci is, she's been on my show a few times, so she's got plenty of wine. It's not like I got to bring wine to her place. I mean, she, hell, she's she's in the industry. So, uh, but you know, if I kind of want to have some fun, we're we're gonna have some fun doing some fortified wines. I'm like, oh, let's have some other stuff. Especially this one because I, I can't really drink all this by myself and maybe the people over there um, uh, might be able to enjoy it with me. I'm sure we'll have a good time with it. And uh, that's it with that. As always, uh, click the links above to friend me up. Uh, hit the donate button over there so I can buy more wine. Remember I bought these, I didn't get them donated. Um, click the link below. <laughs> uh, click the link below. Links below. Uh, I'll have those for uh, the wines. Of course, I just closed all the uh, 
all the tabs so I don't have to search for them again when I upload all the stuff. And uh, we will see everyone next year. <laughs>